Hello everyone. Hi. We're just gonna give it a few minutes for it to connect. We're up now here too. If you're here, say hello so we know. Welcome, welcome. If you're here, say hello. I see it's just connecting now. Everything's connecting. Give us a wave. Any questions, let us know where you're from. We're looking on two different platforms here, so sorry if we're, yeah, we're Facebook confusing everybody. And Instagram Live. So we're in New Jersey right now. It is snowing. Up in the mountains, like mountains. And yeah, we got snow. We're, I'm not so happy. I don't know about you. You? I, I like to ski. I'm not a snow bunny. I'm a beach bunny. Um, but we'll get through. Let us know if you can hear us good, if there's any... Um, you know noise problems or if we're not speaking loud enough please comment because we could read everything's in front of us so hello hello welcome to everybody that's coming on hello john give us a wave little, if you're little, here little yaya just joined <laughs> hi so i am sophia i'm melina for those of you who don't know me i am the chef for ocn I cook sometimes during the holidays and I like to share some Greek traditional recipes and me and Melina actually met a few years ago at a Greek festival and we have a YouTube channel together called Greek Girls Kitchen which you can find our, on our Greek Girls Kitchen Instagram and we have a few YouTube videos together. We just love to cook so tell we them love what to be in the kitchen. Um, we started in the kitchen together weirdly. When we met at the festival, we started talking about all these Greek foods that we loved and how we much we love to travel and, and share Greek recipes. And I work for William Sonoma, and I said, oh, God, Sophia, you're going to have to come do a whole cooking class for me at William Sonoma. I'm going to have you the whole kitchen to yourself. So it started that way, and then we realized how much every time we did classes and, and shows for William Sonoma, we realized how much we loved being in front of a live audience, how much we loved cooking together. It was so much more fun to have a partner with you, someone you can share, laugh stories with, than being there by yourself. And of course, since we're both Greek, we, you know, she knows some of my family and friends, and we're in the Daughters of Penelope together, so we're really involved in the Greek community. So tell them what you're making today. So being that is, it is our Christmas season and our holiday season is, is here, we're in the thick of it, I, have a love for Vasilopita. My family has been making this for me since I was a little girl. Uh, I've been making this probably for over 20 years. I go with the cake version that uh, this recipe has passed down to me from generation and generation. I know a lot of people do have a bread version of this, which is more like a tsureki, but mine is the traditional cake version, and I'm going to be sharing with you my recipe, and we're going to go through it step by step tonight. And tonight I'm going to make a bureki. So my family is from the island of Kriti in Greece, which is the biggest island. And my aunt makes this every time we land. I go straight to her kitchen and it's more in like a big pie version, but I'm gonna show you how to put it inside of a cupcake tin so you can make it for the holidays when you're having friends and family over. Uh, it's a non meat recipe for anyone who's fasting and I can give you some companies and tips and tricks how to make this vegan along the way. If anyone's interested, please comment. And I and think I'm, yeah. cupcake tins is good because you can even do, like Sophia's doing just a regular size, but if you want to do in a mini cupcake tin, you can make this as a great little appetizer, you know, just a little something different. So today I have dill, fresh mint, and some scallion or green onion. Uh, I call it scallion. Most people call it green onion. Everything is fresh. Of course, you can use dried. I highly recommend fresh. That's what I go for. So we're going to start out with our potatoes. Excuse me, mm -hmm. Mel. Do you want to come on this Get side? Yeah. And Sophia, in case you don't know, loves fresh herbs, fresh herbs, fresh herbs. I put it's fresh perfect. herbs in everything and anything. So I pre-peel these and I left them in water. So it's great to do the day before. You can peel your potatoes and then just put them in some water and keep them in the fridge. It keeps them nice and plump and it doesn't make them turn green or gray. So it's a beautiful Idaho potato. You can use any kind of potato for this. And we're gonna start with our cheese mixture, which is the most exciting part. It's so easy. I have feta in the brine. 
So by me, where we live, uh, we're blessed to have a Greek market, which is called the Greek store in Kenilworth, New Jersey. She pretty much has a feta bar. Oh, yeah. Her name is Leah. She's the best. Yeah, call her. She loves, she'll tell you anything you need to know about feta, where it comes from, what kind would you like, salty, a little bit less salty, uh, a little softer, a little firmer. Call her at the Greek store. So this is really creamy. This is actually, I read what it. What did you do, creamier? We did a creamier version. This is actually French feta. So we got about a cup of feta, but you and can measure with your heart. Does your aunt in, in Crete, does she use the Cretan Mizithra? Yes. But I know. You cannot find that here, by the way. I've asked, I've asked everybody from the owners of Fantas Foods, and I can't get, I can't get sweet cream Mizithra here. So we'll all have to go to Crete together, and Sophia and her aunt can make it for us. So my aunt does actually put uh, ricotta cheese. It just smoothens everything out. Makes everything creamy, bind it together because you know the fat is very salty. I'm just gonna mix that together. About a about a cup of that as well. And then we're actually gonna add a little bit of salt. I'm not gonna salt the potatoes, so most of the salt's just gonna come from the cheese mixture. So it's just feta and ricotta. And then we're gonna put all of our delicious fresh herbs. So I got some dill, about a half cup. Gonna mince this up. So this budeki is a zucchini and potato pie. And it's delicious, I've had it, and I cannot wait till it's out of the oven. And then we make like a little a little crust, which is so The smell easy. of the fresh herbs right now is so amazing. And this is great to make during, you know, summertime when everything is in bloom. But this is a great recipe to make ahead of time and can be frozen. So you don't have to worry about cooking the week of the holidays. Yep. It's all crazy. Yeah, I always freeze my pitas, make them in advance when I have more time on my hands. In the freezer, thaw them right into the oven, day of the event or dinner. This is the fresh mint and fresh dill mixture. Looks good. And then about two or three scallions. Today I'm just going to fill up one cupcake tray. I'm just gonna, if you could see, just slice them really thin on an angle. And the sharper your knife, the easier it is to chop. Can you She's believe it or chopper. not? I'm not so good of a good chopper. I'm a really good whisker, but I'm not so good chopper, but this is her skill. When it's dull, the, the blade will like slide against whatever you're cutting. So it's crucial to sharpen your knives and William Sonoma will sharpen your knives yes. for you, which is great. We do, we do have knife sharpening. Come on in. I'm in Woodcliffe Lake in New Jersey if you want to come visit me. So look at this. Oh. You could eat it just like this oh, with some yeah, crackers. I, I totally would. Put it in the oven, add a little spinach. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? But we have a recipe today, so we need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so we got our cheese mixture. Next, we're gonna do our wet mixture, I guess you would call it, which is like the bread topping. So this is this is the most interesting, exciting thing for me because it's easy and I'm not a baker and I don't really like to measure. So we're gonna do it together. I'm gonna do about a cup. And again, you don't have to be crazy with this. You can eyeball it because you just want the consistency to be like pancake batter. So if it's too loose, you add a little bit more. So we got some self-rising flour. And then we have some yogurt, Greek yogurt. Again, about a cup. We're going to put some salt. So instead of your traditional uh, burek, which most places use filo dough, this 
is a non filo dough bureki made uh, Cretan style with, are you using breadcrumbs too? No. No breadcrumbs. So it's a flour, yogurt, olive oil. Yep, olive oil gives it all the flavor it needs and then just a little water and you know, I still have it with my potatoes. So we're just gonna use that. Gonna give it a good mix. Gonna add water as needed. It is so easy because you can technically put this on anything. So yeah. if you make like a like a meat pie or I know a lot of areas too do do use like a cornmeal in there as well. <laughs> She's dirty already. They probably can't even see it. Don't worry. Um, but yeah, some places do uh, depends on where you're from in, in Greece or in Europe. They do use uh, cornmeal in this as well. I have seen it. And you can, you know, flavor this however you want. Actually, just because we're here, why not put a little dill in there? Mm -hmm. Why not? Why not put a little mint? And this is the, the top. And I'll show you how it is. It's just like a thick. Like a pasty. Like paste. Yeah. And when it cooks up, I'm going to put a little sesame seed. And then I like to top mine and eat it with a little honey once it's done. Yeah, of course. It's so good. And you're gonna see that this is going to turn into the most amazing crust. Mm. And that olive oil, it's like a flaky a crumble more. on top. It's beautiful. So I have gallons of Cretan olive oil uh, that we pick up from Brooklyn that we get shipped in. So, you know, we just use leftover wine in this house to put our olive oil in. <laughs> And we give a lot away, which I gotta give you some olive oil before you yeah. leave. So the olive oil, the salt, the flour, and the yogurt makes the most amazing crust. We're gonna just set this aside. Now, if anyone has a mandolin and you know likes to use that, go ahead. We're just gonna cut thin today. We're gonna start out with our potato. And I actually just showed this recipe at a Greek church in New Jersey about a few months ago and it was such a hit and everyone just loved it so much and I was like, how can I make this different and easy and fun for the holidays? So I came up with Slicing these thin instead of, you know, an inch thick like I did for that big pie. And building it into almost like a little hors d'oeuvre. Yeah. And, you know, you can use any kind of vegetable. You can use leftover vegetables. Kind of just like want to get them thin. And then once they're in the oven, they're going to be very crispy. I already, um, I buy olive oil spray from like Trader Joe's, uh, Whole Foods. And I sprayed my nonstick cake pan. And I'm just going to layer my potatoes. And some people like to make their budaki with frying potatoes, but you don't need to because the oven's gonna be so hot and it's gonna turn into a beautiful crisp on the bottom of the pan. So we're just gonna layer our little thin potato inside the pan. And if some of them are too little or too thin, just double them up. Any questions, feel free. You know, Melina, yeah, we, got, I, we have a reader here. Read, so if you need to reach out to us, I can I can do all the reading and help help answer as well. And then we're gonna put a little layer of our cheese mixture beautifully. Let's try to get you guys in here too. You guys are the, the Facebook to the right, Instagram to the left. This is our cheese mixture. It has the feta. All the fresh herbs. The ricotta. You could have put some yogurt in here. Why not? Yeah. Nothing hurts in this recipe. And taste as you go. Do you want to taste it? <laughs> I'm still full. <laughs> My mom made us some... Uh, pasta with sauce before so homemade sauce was delicious we're full and then i had a greek coffee does anyone drink hot greek coffee because i just bought my first briki myself which was oh, like yeah. very exciting because i grew up with my dad making greek coffee and 
now I'm doing it. So I think he would be very happy. <laughs> And here's our zucchini. You can use summer squash. You can use eggplant. And I'm just going to do the same. I'm going to slice it thin. So you're going to do another layer after? Or just yeah. one one? Yeah, I'm going to kind of layer it probably twice. Okay. I'm going to actually put two. So we're just putting our zucchini. How do you say zucchini in Greek? Konoki. Kolokithi. Yeah. Colleen is my good Greek speaker. I'm the good Greek eater. Yeah. How fun is this? And how crispy it's going to get. Yeah, it looks great. And this is fun for kids, you know, just like to pre-cut everything before you get started and they can do all the layering because there's really no screwing up with this. Like you just, you just build. And we're gonna go cheese again so the potato can stick. How long are we gonna be baking this out? I'm gonna probably do about 35 minutes in a 375 oven. And you know, just have a nice paring knife near your ovens, you can, you know, check ever so often. And these can be pre-cooked and then refrigerated again and then heated up, you know, when you get to a family member's house, that's great. And this is amazing to make with vegan cheese. I love the brand Mykonos. They have it at Whole Foods. Um, Just great for fasting. Great for so. fasting. You can use like cashew milk, almond milk, yogurt. You can use gluten, uh, almond flour. So there's like so many different variations you can take to make it healthier and, you know, just in time for the holidays when you're fasting mm -hmm. for celebrations. So we're gonna go one more time with the potato and then we're gonna put that delicious crust and top it off with my favorite sesame seeds, sesame. Oil, I love anything with sesames. <laughs> sesames and capers. Capers, <laughs> I love capers. Capers would be good in here too. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't take them out. <laughs> so beautiful potato. And if anyone makes this or makes a variation, tag us because I wanna see it. I wanna be inspired too. Yeah, we love when people take our recipes and go with it and give it their own little twist. So definitely reach out to us. I was actually talking to a friend the other night and she asked me, how can I be challenged in the kitchen? And I said, make something that you've had and change it to the way you think you would like it. So if you make this and you make it better, I want to know. <laughs> So here we go, we have our layer of potato, our cheese, our zucchini, and then a potato, cheese, and more, and layering. <laughs> layers and layers. So this, again, flour, yogurt, olive oil, and salt. And I'm just gonna put it over. It looks like cupcakes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm gonna probably top mine before eating with some Cretan mountain honey. Oh, definitely. With some sweet and salty. No, everyone's making like a baked brie. Be different, make yeah. this. Use goat cheese. You um, can use yeah. any kind of cheese you want. I use, um, what's the cheese that I use now for a brie? Not halloumi. Manuri. Manuri oh, actually does a would be really good. good brie. Yeah. All right, do we have Manuri fans? Anybody? Anyone? <laughs> Comments better go off because that is a good cheese. Yeah. That definitely is. So I'm just. With a little fig spread on top. That's really good. Sesame seeds. Beautiful. 
and that is done. This can be pre-baked, frozen, whatever you wanna do. It's there for you. I'm gonna get this in the 365 degree oven and uh, might actually put it a little bit higher because I know you guys are gonna wanna see it. If not, I'm going to upload a photo to Facebook and Instagram so you can see the final product. That mint and dill. Yeah, so it smells good. amazing. It smells like grease for sure. Okay, so I'm just gonna clean up our little herb area over here and I prepped already a little bit just to give us a little bit of a head start here. So, just gonna get my herbs out of the way. So like I said before, Vasilopita to me um, has always been a tradition in my house. Uh, one of my favorites, to be honest, I always waited uh, for New Year's Eve to come so that, because I knew on New Year's Day, my aunt was cutting that Vasilopita and it was probably one of the best cakes I ever had. Uh, it's also a big celebration of name day. As we know, Vasilopita is named after St. Basil. Uh, there is a really cute tradition, uh, legend, let's say, that I did read about years ago about St. Basil, how uh, the city was under siege and he was trying to help the citizens and he asked everybody to collect all their belongings, um, coins, gold, jewelry, anything they had so that they could pay off the enemy and not come in and siege. And the enemy was so embarrassed that the citizens of the city all got together to fight against him that he didn't even take the ransom. So poor St. Basil didn't know what to do because now he didn't know whose belongings all these uh, treasures came from. So he decided to bake breads and cakes and hide all of the things inside and he dropped them off to everybody in the city's house and miracle happened say that everybody got their own belongings so he was correct on whoever he dropped the stuff off to. So that's just a little bit on St. Basil himself. Uh, we do celebrate him on January 1st. It is a big name day in my house. It is a big tradition. My mom, my daughter, my niece. So we all look forward to celebrating together and cutting our traditional vasilopita. So I'm going to show you my version that I have been having since a little girl and been making probably for about 20 years now. And I want to say, I don't tell my aunt this, but actually mine's a little bit better than hers. I know she would be <laughs> mad, but she's not watching. So I can tell this year. If we save it, will she watch it? <laughs> <laughs> so in here, I have already creamed um, my butter and sugar. So I've got one stick of butter and two thirds cup of sugar. I creamed it already so that it's ready for you. And now I'm gonna add in, I'm gonna do a little, this is gonna be loud. So I'm gonna try not to do it too long. Because we have Pam's old blender here, mixer yeah. here. Do you guys see my blender? <laughs> we, this is what I know I have to buy Pam for Christmas. She needs a new KitchenAid. Oh, and she does not bake. <laughs> so I've got, this is my little trick here. So I know it says that it is flour for gravy, but this makes the best vasilopita. And I couldn't figure out why my aunt had Wondra flour on the recipe years ago, but I went with it. Whatever my aunt tells me, I'm gonna follow the recipe to the T. So years later when I went to Greece and I went all over Europe and baking, and I realized that every time I went to get flour, it was the same consistency. So I said to myself, that must be it. When she came from Greece, she was probably looking for a flour that was thin, like the flour they're used to using in Greece. So Wondra makes the best cake. You can use regular flour, it's not gonna have the same consistency, but you can find this in any supermarket. And this, in this batter, we're gonna use, this whole thing is three cups, so you don't even need a measuring cup for this one because we're gonna use the whole jar. And then in here, I've got my milk mixed in with the baking powder. We're gonna pour some of that in. Now we'll share our recipe 
Yeah. Once we're done, um, usually OCN has me send in the recipes and they'll put it on a little part of their website, so look out for that. And our vasilopita is traditional, you know, we do our cutting of the cutting of the bread or the cake on New Year's Day or midnight if you're waiting up for it. Do your sign of the cross on the vasilopita before you cut it. And then everybody has their own traditions of who gets the first piece. And I know there's variations throughout Greece, throughout Europe, of people who have their own, where they're from in Greece, they have their own little variations of the recipes. And this is from my mom's side, and they are in the Arcadia section by Tripoli, so if anybody is from that area, I'm sure you must know this one very well. Now we're gonna add in over here, I've got a half of a lemon juice with my baking soda. Lemon juice and baking soda. Just a little bit. If anyone has any questions or wants to share a story or a memory, we would love to, re to read and share that as well. And every time I make this for people, especially if my friends are over, because now I got them into the tradition of baking, it's always the question, why don't you put the coin in the batter? And I don't, I put it in after it's baked. And when they ask me why, I, because that's what my aunt told me to do. And I won't change. When she tells me this is how you do it, I stick to it. It's tradition. So, but you can, I'm sure, wrap the coin in foil and just throw it into the batter and bake it out. I wait till the cake, when it first comes out and it's piping hot, I just put the coin in wrapped in foil and because the cake is so hot, it just seals itself right back up. And then I flip the cake anyway, so you don't know where it is. Although everybody tries to cheat. Yep. So we've got our the rest of our flour going in. One by one, our six eggs. Should have had a little bigger bowl, but <laughs> all right. Get an egg in there. Tell us more about the cheese you mentioned before. The cheese that I used today was just feta and ricotta cheese, but the classic way, if you're going to have that buraki recipe that I just made, it's, it's a, a sweet cream nizitra. It's a sweet cream cheese, and they don't really have it yeah. here. You have to get it in Crete, so which means you'll have to come with us. <laughs> That's Joey. <laughs> he wants to come with us. So we have six eggs. Mm -hmm. When I tell you, you're gonna wanna eat this cake every morning for breakfast with your Greek coffee. It's that good. And I, like I said before, I'm completely obsessed with Greek coffee these days. I make a frappe every afternoon and I start my day with a hot Greek coffee. And let me know if you want me to go live. I can totally teach you how to make a Greek coffee. There are some tips and tricks, and it's absolutely delicious. I've been drinking the brand called Bravo, and I absolutely love it. So let us know. Comment. Comment what you'd like to see next, what you think the OCN should be promoting with food. Let us know. We're here. Manuti is a fantastic cheese. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's like a little hidden gem that not many people know about, but it is delicious. Now oh, this batter looks so fluffy and silky it smooth. It really and it's is. from that flour. It's my so. wondra. It's my wondra little secret. It's a wonderful secret. <laughs> it sure is. Okay. Hey, if it's broke, don't fix it. Who's got one of these at home still? <laughs> Let's get these out. The ancient 
mixer. So yeah, our batter is, I mean, just like silk. It's beautiful. So I have sprayed our pan. This size recipe that I just did is going to fit a 10 inch round. If you're doing a larger one, you have a larger family, uh, you can use a 14, anything, just double the recipe. Now I know someone is eyeing that pan. <laughs> this is a Williams Sonoma Gold Touch Pro pan. This is the only collection that I bake with. I love every piece from the collection. I have probably about 20 bunt pans. I buy them like every week. I'm obsessed with them. And one lucky winner is going to receive this beautiful pan to make this wonderful recipe for Melina. So be on the lookout. Okay. Just comment away if you wanna win that pan. It's amazing. Now, speaking of the coin, shout out to Patmos Press. They are giving away a beautiful Vasilopita coin and it comes in a beautiful case with the meaning behind the coin and the history. Beautiful. And so they can use that maybe with their Vasilopita. Yes. So when you're using this recipe for your New Year's this year, which I hope you do, because that means I'm sharing New Year's with all of you, uh, put it inside your coin. And if you want to bake it in, that's fine. Just tell me how it came out. But if you want to do it my style, when it comes out of the oven right away, wrap it in foil, stick it in. And then <laughs> when the cake cools and you flip it, Nobody knows where that coin is. Uh, people would love to win all of these beautiful gifts. So well, we are ready now to get this in the oven. I do 350 for about 45 minutes. Just take um, either a toothpick. I use souvlaki sticks because I'm Greek. Just souvlaki <laughs> stick in to test it to make sure that the center is cooked. And that's it. You let it cool. And then when it comes out, Someone said you make it look easy. She does. Is. She's so it's good so at baking. Easy. You want to know what it is? She has fun. You got to have fun. You got to enjoy it. Don't bake alone. Bake with your family. Yeah. So it comes out and it's beautifully rounded. And you just want to take your... I go simple. If you want to get fancy, I know a lot of people order those big 2020... What year are we going in? 22? <laughs> uh numbers and everything uh you could do pretty uh holly and berries and stuff on top but the traditional way just powdered sugar and take a knife or a spoon and do your own year someone's looking for your feta mac and cheese recipe <laughs> that's another episode okay so we just do our powdered sugar and like i said if you really i don't have the best handwriting but it's okay you could just oh Beautiful. Do it yourself if you want. Look and how pretty. just like that, it's done. And tradition has it always when you go to cut it, make sure you do the sign of the cross on it so that everybody in the house that is enjoying it with you is blessed for the year. Mm. Should we cut a piece? Yes. Okay. We're cutting a piece just so you see how beautifully moist the inside is. I'll get a knife. Yeah. And I wish you were all here to try this with us. Sophia has plenty of coffee for us. We really would love to hear from you. We'd love to have your recipes. We would love to share recipes with you. Uh, we are Greek Girls Kitchen on Instagram and Greek Girls Kitchen on YouTube. If you're bored tonight, so you see, watch us. how beautiful <laughs> and soft and moist this cake is. It's wow. delicious. I'm gonna take a bite because I've been dying all day. <laughs> She's been waiting. So good. Oh, it's the crisp on the top. I could already feel it. And when it's fresh, there's nothing like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Amazing. Mm. The powdered the sugar? Recipe? Yes, the first piece is always for Christ, but we do the cross too. We do for Christ, we do for the house. Um, usually goes in order of everybody's age so the oldest gets the first and then you go down down the line from that way I know this is a Greek tradition but if you are not Greek 
and you would like to share your story and your, you know, how you grew up in your household. If there's anything like this at all, please share. I would love to know or message us. We're going to post the recipe like we said, so you'll have all the ingredients broken down for you, time and all that goodness. I can't wait for the new year. I know. I'm looking forward to the new, new year. The new new year. <laughs> nice and sweet, just like our Vasilopita. So one lucky winner is going to win that beautiful uh, coin for their Vasilopita this year, along with a Vasilopita pan and a pastry bus. Shout out to William Sonoma in Because every Greek Tyson's girl needs corner. to have a pastry. It's like necessity. Pastry brush and a good round baking pan. So Do you staple. show Lenten meals? Yes. If you go on myocn.com, I'm pretty sure there is an area where there are all of my recipes. If you have you trouble, me just message me on Chef Soph Instagram and I can help you. Or um, the OCN will most likely go through and comment and link that for you. But if there's any last minute questions, it's so late here in London, I'm in bed and you've made me hungry. <laughs> That's what happens when you watch these food shows. I can't watch the Food Network anymore without having something to eat. So I get that. Yeah. I get that. I usually get up and cook right when Food Network's on because it gets me all in the mood again. Um, so that's still cooking. I'm going to post a picture. Don't you worry so you guys can see. And hopefully it's a perfectly crispy picture of those potatoes and those zucchinis. So don't get too hungry. I know it's late. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to see more of us, please comment. Please comment any kind of recipes you would like. Any food questions, we'll be going through the comments and commenting because this is going to be saved and you can send it to your family and friends. And anything else, Melina? Just wishing you all a Merry Christmas. Kala Christuliana. Happy New Year. Happy, healthy. And we hope to see you in the New Year. And I hope you do enjoy your New Year's cake. God bless My you all. Son. Love you. See you soon. Bye. Thank you so much, OCN. We love you.